Well, hi guys, welcome back to TJM. This episode, my X350 XJR, named Arnie, is now 20 years old. So happy birthday, Arnie. She's 20 years old and she's also due for a service. So we're going to do a minor service on it, but also I'm going to go through and do a big checklist and go right through the car underneath it. It's the first time I'm going to put it up on the for poster. I have to get Delta down off that first and have a look underneath it, check the brakes, check all the tie rod ends and linkages, make sure everything's okay there, give it an oil change and then go to the top end, check all the fluids there and just go through things that um, may need to be looked at when you own a 20 year old XJR or if you're going to buy one. Now I'm no mechanic so it's only going to be a basic look through of stuff, of stuff that I've learned over the years. So first of all we'll just change move a few of these cars around and get her up on the four poster Okay, show the lightning. Come on, baby. You can do it, Baba. Come on. Yeah. I do love my Noco battery boost. <laughs> With eight motor vehicles in the family, you can't do without one of them. <laughs> okay, try one more time. Oh, she had a little loose connection. So good, we'll get it off this uh, ramp. Okay, this is the first time I've been under this car since we've owned it. We've owned it for around about 14 months or so. And first thing you'll notice is it's missing its front skid pan. It never had on one on when I bought it. However, it doesn't sort of bother me. They don't really do much, um, and it makes it easier for me to change the oil. But I'm just looking at that um, filter there. It's a genuine Jaguar filter. Now, I've had this car chain, oil changed by a local mechanic. I'd be really surprised if he'd used a Jaguar, genuine Jaguar filter on it. Who knows, it's got a little bit of a wheat from this right hand uh, the steering rack, it's not too bad, it's only a little bit, over 20 years I'm not too complain not complaining about that too much. And front suspension, it all feels tight but I've just noticed that that rubber on that outer tie rod end is um, knackered, unfortunately, so that'll have to be changed and to take that off I've got to take the brake caliper off. The rest looks pretty um, standardly honest. But we'll check for movement on a couple of these um, bushes and that in a little while. This side looks okay. The, all the air shocks have been replaced at some stage. I don't know what brand they are there. And they look like they're the same brand on the front. It's always a good thing. But very little oil leaking here. I see there's a little bit of a weep coming out of there somewhere. But I don't know where it is coming from. Because it's nice and dry up and up the top there. No, it's all good. This is dry. A little bit there. It might be just coming from the pan. We might just nip those up a little bit and see if that helps. But yeah, it's looking okay. Catalytic converters, they're looking okay. They look like they're damaged at all. I had the um, ZF gearbox service when I first bought it last year. But now knowing how easy it is to change the uh, oil or the fluid and the filter on this thing, next time I would probably do it myself. On the uh, supercharged model of this, um, on the X350s, on the ZF gearbox, there's a plastic uh, lower cover and that incorporated, incorporates the filter in there, so you've got to replace that whole thing. So it, uh, they're still not expensive. I think they're only about $150 for a new filter and that, don't quote me on that price. And all you've got to do, there's a drain plug there, which is pretty easy, and then it's a filler plug up there. 
So you just drain it and then fill it up to the proper amount of special ZF uh, fluid that you have to use. Um, exhaust system, it looks pretty tidy. A lot of bloody mufflers on this thing. You've got this centre muffler here, you've got another one here. And then you've got, oh, excuse me, and you've got another two back here, which I don't know if they're original or not, because this has had some modifications to the exhaust. And then all the way back here, I've got these chrome, well, I call them drain pipes, because that's what they look like, big bloody 150 millimetre drain pipes, which could do with a bit of a clean. This car's rather quiet on the road, mainly because it's got so many bloody mufflers on it, I think. Back to the diff, it's looking pretty okay and dry. It's a little bit of old weepy oil up there, but it's not leaking any. I'd like to change that diff oil eventually. I'm not gonna do it today because I don't have any correct oil to do it with. But notice it hasn't got a drain plug, not like most, so you've got to suck it out of the filler plug and then fill it up. and. The level is when it starts flowing out of that plug is the proper level. Rear shockies, they look okay. There's not much you can look at a shock. They're, they're working pretty well. The whole shocky and catch suspension is really good. Um, sway bar linkages, they look... Ooh, oh, okay. I got an issue straight away. And sometimes I can feel that noise when we go over a bump. However, that's a... That's, they're pretty easy to change. What about this one? Oh, that's tight. Okay, well that's interesting. But lots of things, the upper uh, control arms look like they've been replaced at some time. I think actually I do have a receipt for that. And the lower ones I'll just look like they might have had new rubbers in them, pressed in. I think, I think. And I had a receipt for that as well. But we'll just check to make sure there's no movement in any of those in a little bit. I'd actually really like to look under another XJR and see how the exhaust system is fitted because they're genu definitely not genuine and I know they're not. Is that tight? Yeah, all right. And um, it's got a bit of a note, this car, but it is rather quiet. Stuck into this oil change first before anything. I'm pretty excited because this is the first time I'm going to be able to use my uh, oil drain. And um, hopefully I'm not going to get oil all over myself with... This gorgeous little piece. <coughs> okay, let's see if I can take this off without making a mess. Ready, ready, ready. I'll get the socket on there. Come on, get on there, mate. Ah. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Whoa, look at that. Oops, makes me feel like I want to go to the bathroom. Well, I don't know if it was a good thing, me not spilling oil all over the place with when I change oil, because I think you guys get a bit of a kick out of it. It's funny. Sometimes it's funny. Look at this. This is a nice way to change your oil, isn't it? Uh-oh. Oh, one drop from there. That's okay. Ooh. Probably the best thing I got for Christmas was this. How cool is that? Let that drain. I had to get a K&N filter because that was the only one I was able to get locally. But it should do the job. Yes, I did oil up the gasket if anyone was asking. Beautiful. This one has a nut on the back to get it off, but that was relatively easy to get off that filter. And then also give you a service sticker that's almost impossible to pull off the cardboard box. Okay, um, we'll uh, j just whiz off, before we put the oil in it, we'll just whiz off a front and back wheel and just check the brakes and see how they're going. Okay, front wheel. Nice and tight that way. No movement that way. Yeah, beautiful. Nice and quiet. That's pretty good. Now I'm pretty sure the brakes are good, but I'm just going to whiz off the wheel and just have a look how 
how those discs are wearing, how those pads are wearing. <coughs> well, tyre wear looks pretty good. Looks like they're wearing evenly. Well, that's a good sign. And discs, well, they weren't they were replaced not so long ago. So they're looking okay. Pads. Can we see them? Yeah, they're looking pretty fat. No need to change them. Uh, I love um, traditional Jaguar style. They do use a two-pin arrangement to um, with the uh, rattle plate, which means you don't have to take the caliper off on like some other modern cars. And so you just knock the pins out and the, the pad should come straight out. And while we're here we might give those um, calipers a bit of a clean up, a bit of brake cleaner or similar. These lovely little alloy, it should come up a treat. Ooh, haven't been cleaned properly for a long time so we'll get them nice and clean. Uh, that's looking a bit cleaner, but someone has been a bit rough with a hammer knocking out those pins, which is a bit disappointing. Never mind. To change the disc on these things, it's super simple. It's just a question of removing the caliper, and there's only two bolts on the back of the caliper that you remove, and you just hang it. You don't even have to disconnect any lines. And then they pull off. Wheel bearings are even simpler. You don't actually have to punch out wheel bearings in the hub. You actually buy new hubs. I don't know how much they are, but it seems like a lot simpler idea. They are pressed in a little bit, so there's only two, I think, Torque 55s down there. I can't see what size is that. And they undo them and just knock out the hub if you have to replace the wheel bearings. But these are pretty good. Upper control arms are also good, but I know they were replaced not so long ago, so I don't have to worry about them. All good and tidy in there. We'll check the other wheel. I like the hand thread these in first. I mean, don't use a rattle gun when you take them off and on, but I'm lazy, so I'm using a rattle gun. I just won't go too heavy duty on it. Back wheel off. Well, this is in an order, in good order. A tiny, windy, inchy bincy little lip there, but that's got a few thousand Ks left on it. Handbrake pads. I don't know how much pad they have on when new, but there's about, there's about three millimetres on either side there, so I think they're all right. And rear brake pads. Can we see them? Oh, I just can't get in there. Yeah. It's hard to tell because I couldn't get a good angle on it, but that inner pad looks like it's almost worn down to nothing, and this one hasn't got much on it either. So guess what, boys? We need rear pads. Another little interesting point on these um, Jaguar calipers, they have two bleeds, one on each side of the pad. Is that like for normal modern cars? Do they do that? Every other car I've seen has only got one bleed nipple per caliper. Otherwise, besides that, it's all good at the rear end. Okay, we'll get this thing back down on the ground. When I started to work on this thing this morning, it was overcast and not too hot for a summer's day. But the clouds have now all gone and it's about 35 degrees in the shade. And I'm sweating, man. I'm hot. I had trouble opening the hinge just then. It was a bit jammed. It needs a bit of WD on it. It was stuck in place, but uh, I'll just grease that up. I don't go under this bonnet that often because it's not really necessary unless you're servicing it but we'll put some oil in it and just have a look at the other fluids while we're here beautiful a little bit uh, the plastic goes deteriorates under look at that look at that on the rubber So they don't make it easy to um, fill these things. Look where that oil cap is. And it's tiny. What am I going to put into that? Don't pour oil in there. We'll work out something. Does that fit? Cool, that should do it. Put it around the wrong way, it should be that way. 
so you don't splash it as you do it. But it won't go around that way, so I'll just have to hold it there. So 5W30 is the grade of oil you should be using in these supercharged models. So I followed what the book says and using it, fully synthetic obviously. I've chosen the Penrite one for it, um, for most reasons because I follow the brand and also it was at half price. And it takes a little bit over 7 litres so I don't know if I'm going to get this and not spill it but let's see how we go. Yeah, we're doing good. I'll put roughly 7 litres in there. And we'll just start it up and then check the oil in a minute. Check the coolant. Probably can do with a little bit of, yeah, a little bit can go in there. It's not leaking. This is a newish reservoir tank that was replaced and I couldn't see any leaks underneath it. But it can do with a little bit of a top up. So we'll give that a bit of a top up in a minute. Power steering. Just make sure that's looking good. Oh, there's a thing over in there. I've got to get that out. Can you get that out? No, I thought you could get that out. But there, you can see from the side there that uh, it's in between its minimum and maximum, so we'll leave it at that. If you see bubbles in your power steering, it means you've got air in your system and you might have a leak. But we can't actually see it in that because that's got that little filter in it. And so uh, we might even just clean out the pollen filter while we're here too. I haven't got a new one for it, but we'll just give it a blow out. So we'll get that out. Hopefully easy. Where is that little mother? Oh, sorry. Huh, wrong side. Yep. There she is. So I can definitely do with a clean. Ugh, it's pretty dirty. We might give that a bit of a um, blow it out. Other things to check. Check the air cleaner. Yep, that looks good. That will do. Check for oil leaks around your tappet covers. They tend to occasionally leak. I'm not going to whiz off the coil covers to check because I know I don't have any leaks but even if you have to change those um, tappet covers those valve covers they're pretty easy to change just whiz out the coils take the covers off them and buy a new gasket set make sure the gasket set's got the uh, o-rings in for the sparky plugs and also for the center the center mount bolts or oh, no all those bolts because they've got rubbers on them as well so some of the gasket sets only have the outer um, cam cover gasket so it's pretty good we'll leave that oh no, I forgot to oil that hinge oh geez it's stuck oh god I have to put the camera down ha ah, that's better it was, it was getting stuck in there before we'll check the oil by the time that settles that should be perfect Yeah, she's sounding pretty sweet, no ugly noises in there. Oil's check. Put the cover on it, we'll get this thing off the hoist. Okay, Dr. Jag did that last one, so I know he would have used that genuine uh, Jaguar filter, so that makes me feel a bit comfortable. I thought I had it done down the road, so we rip off old mates. One, which will be the last one because old Dr. Jag's retired, uh, sadly. This is my favourite part, putting that new one up. I made it due in 7,000 kilometers. I know it calls for 10, or it might even be 15, but that's that's ridiculous. But I think five's overkill, and 10 is too long, so I've made it, I've made it in 7,000 K. If I did it in five, it wouldn't get done anyway, so um, it's done. So that was the last one. It was a few couple of months overdue. It was due last October. And um, it was done at 298,000, so it's done 207. So it's just done 9,000 kilometres since the last one, which is a little bit longer than I normally like, but it's the first chance I've had to do it. I have to juggle a few jags to get it off. I'm glad those uh, jobs have now been completed. Wifey's taking it back to Big Smoke tomorrow, so I might even give it a wash 
before she heads back in the morning. But yeah, very pleased. Well, another job done. I'm really happy that's because it uh, saves having me to pay someone and to do it. And it was also good. I love to have a look under that thing to see um, what condition it was in. And I'm you know, reasonably happy. It's in very good condition. I still need to do sway bar linkages at the rear. Uh, that the left uh, left rear one is just got a little bit of a rattle in it, uh, movement in, and it will need rear brake pads pretty pretty soon too, and I'll do those myself. It's a 20 year old car with 307,000 kilometres on it, so I, I thought it looked pretty good considering how many high Ks that car's done. So thanks guys for watching, I really appreciate it, and don't forget to give the thumbs up if you like the video. It really does help my channel and the algorithms, and if you haven't subscribed, you can do that, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Now the question is, will Delta start? Oh no, I probably had disconnected the battery, so we'll fix that up first. Hi guys, welcome back to TJM. Today's episode, my ex, uh, someone's got a bloody whippersnapper happening. I'm dead.